Welcome back. Today's topic is cellular transport. We'll be specifically talking about the two kinds of cell transport and comparing them, as well as introducing you to how they work. Passive and active transport are the two ways that a cell moves things across a membrane. This is important for the cell because this is the way that the cell maintains balance, otherwise known as homeostasis. Active and passive transport, the two ways, the two varieties, are different in, in one critical way. Active transport requires energy. This makes sense. We see the word active and energy. Passive transport then requires, I hope you guessed, no energy. Okay? Passive transport happens on its own and does not require any extra, extra energy from the cell. So you will need to be familiar with the examples of each. The examples of active transport and the examples of passive transport. Passive transport happens in two ways. Simple diffusion, in which molecules move from an area of high concentration to a low concentration, which if you recall from diffusion and osmosis does not require energy. Diffusion can happen across the cell membrane through the lipid bilayer without anything else involved. Passive transport also can occur through protein channels. And protein channels allow mo certain molecules, like water, for instance, to move through. And when the cell allows water to move through itself, we would call that osmosis because osmosis is the movement of water. Active transport involves protein pumps as well, which are integrated into the protein. But in this case, they're active, and protein pumps require energy to work. Endocytosis and exocytosis. Those are our types of active and passive transport. And now I'm going to show you what the, how each of these works. Passive transport, diffusion and osmosis. The key here, whenever you look at a diagram like this, and you should expect to see diagrams like this on an assessment, the first thing you want to notice is the molecules that are moving here, here, right? And notice where the concentration is. Here there's a high concentration, and here there's a low concentration, OK? Molecules that are small and uncharged can simply move through the lipid bilayer. So if I have a lot of these small molecules that are uncharged, if you remember from what you learned about the cell membrane, these molecules can simply pass through from an area of high concentration to low concentration. Large and charged molecules move through a special channel protein. which is integrated or embedded in that lipid bilayer. And they allow large molecules, like this, to pass through the cell membrane, molecules that normally would be too large to pass through the lipid bilayer on their own. This is passive transport because, again, they are moving from a high down the hill to a low. No energy is required for that to occur. Sometimes passive transport involves um, a protein that is designed to carry a specific molecule. In this case, you'll notice that this molecule fits in this protein that is embedded, this carrier protein that is embedded. But again, the molecule is moving from high concentration to low concentration. And even though the carrier protein is changing shape and moving, this again does not require energy. Active transport. We're going to begin by talking about exocytosis and endocytosis. In this case, you need to note where the interior of the cell is. Uh, this is done with a vesicle. This is a vesicle. And a vesicle is a small package of material surrounded by a lipid bilayer. It's, so, it's sort of like a mini cell within the cell. Um, this uh, package 
moves up, this vesicle moves up and fuses with the cell wall here, and then opens up, allowing the molecules to exit the cell. Okay? So we have the cell interior and we have the exterior. And cells use this to move any molecule that they make on the inside to the outside. And this is particularly important in your brain. Your brain is often moving proteins, signaling proteins from one nerve cell in your brain to another. And it allows the nerve cells to communicate with each other. Endocytosis, then, is the opposite. The way that I remember this is endo. So endocytosis is moving endo the cell. I don't know. It works for me. If it works for you, use it. Exocytosis out of the cell, endocytosis endo the cell or into the cell. Again, we have the cell interior. In this case, the molecules right here are engulfed by the cell and brought into the inside of the cell, forming a vesicle. So here is our vesicle. Both of these are active transport because it requires the cell to use energy to engulf the molecules or to push the molecules outside of itself. To move that vesicle around, to fuse it with the cell membrane, requires energy. Now, can you distinguish between the two? Which one is endocytosis? Which one is exocytosis? I hope you said that this one is endocytosis, movement into the cell, and this one is exocytosis, movement of molecules out of the cell. The last type of active transport is one that involves protein pumps. And if you look at this diagram right here, you will again see our phospholipid bilayer with our heads and our tails, and we have a protein that is integrated into it right here. In this case, the protein is a type of pump called a proton pump, and it's pumping hydrogen ions. And you'll also notice up here this word ATP. And if you recall, ATP is the energy source of the cell. And in this case, the ATP is being added to the protein pump. Okay. The other thing I want you to notice is that the high concentration is here, and the low concentration is here. So in this case, if we have our hill, we begin here and here. Things are moving from low to high. If you were to roll a rock up a hill, it would require energy. Remember, active transport is a type of transport that requires energy. And proton pumps are used, or protein pumps, are used to move molecules from an area of low concentration to high concentration. And that ends this mini lesson on the types of cell transport. You are going to need to be familiar with the differences between active and passive transport, the kinds of active and passive transport, and by looking at a diagram, you're going to need to be able to identify the five main kinds of passive and active transport.